To begin using the programming wand, you will first need to download and install Java. To do that, open a web browser and go to java.com and click on the large red free Java download link. Click on the agree and start free download and the download appropriate to your machine will begin downloading. Install it. Once the installation is complete, go ahead and close the browser window and plug your wand into your computer thusly. Once it's plugged in via USB, go ahead and close out your web browser and you should see a removable disk item entry here. Click on open folder to view files and double click on the Pixie Plus configuration utility. If Java is already installed, this will open automatically for you like you would any other executable. The first pick is to mimic the buttons that we have on our Pixie Plus. In our case, we're going to be using the on and off button as opposed to toggling. We will be using the two key middle source section, but there are other options for one key and four key. And we'll be using the volume up and down button as well. To begin adding codes, click the green plus icon. If you are entering ASCII codes, you must couch ASCII codes in single quotes or apostrophes. For example, here is an Epson code for power on. The PWR space ON code is the actual power on code. The dollar sign zero D is a character turn, the same as if hitting enter on your keyboard. This is the full code for power on for an Epson projector. The baud rate is set at 9600 8N1, which is what Epson uses. Other manufacturers may use a different baud rate, and you will need to set it accordingly as needed. Once your code is entered, click OK. If you need to enter additional codes on power on, for example, a screen up or down code, just hit the next screen plus icon and enter in the new code data. If the code data you are entering is hex as opposed to ASCII, those codes need to be preceded by dollar signs. For example, dollar sign DE, dollar sign EF is a simple hex code. Just enter those in as is without the single quotes and hit OK, and the code will be entered in. If any of these codes are entered in error, the system will alert you of the error. So if we do this without the single quotes and hit OK, it lets you know that the power code is invalid in this, in this scenario. Entering in the other single quote, and it goes off without a hitch. Same thing here if we were to take the single quotes out entirely. Again, the code is not valid, but couching it in the single quotes makes it valid, as sending it as ASCII. If the codes need to be set in macro, meaning a power on code for the Epson and a power on code for a secondary display, and perhaps a code for a screen down command for our relay control, select send this key codes as macro. And all those codes will be sent in sequence on a single press of the button. If however you do not need to be sent that way, uncheck the box and that will turn the button into a toggle. We're pressing the button repeatedly, we'll go to each code in succession. So the first press will be power on, the second press will be the BEEF code that we have here. Once all of your codes are entered, across each of these individual tabs. Go ahead and press send to wand. When that is pressed, you will be asked to save the configuration. Give it some name. In this case, we are just doing a test here, so just call it wand test. Then click save. Once the save finishes, the send to wand button will gray out and you'll be ready to use your wand to write it to a pixie. There are other options in this tab as well. Example, schedule, WAN time, UI and security, and updates. For schedule, you will need a clock module to set up those scheduling to apply to your time. 
So for example, let's go ahead and select Schedule Event Active, and let's add in a scheduled event. So in this case, the Power Off button, whatever commands are on there, will be sent on starting on January 1st, ending on December 31st, for every day of the week at midnight. We can of course change this time to whatever we see fit. So let's say we want to do it 11.30 instead of at midnight. That's all we would do. And again, the Send to One button is no longer grayed out, but if we click it again, it will gray out thusly. Speaking of time, and that is required for the scheduling of events, you'll click on one time, and with the clock module attached, you need to set the time to the time zone that you're currently in. This will apply to your current clock time on your computer. So for example, right now it's 2.13 p.m. If we set the wand to set to current system time, the wand time updates appropriately. It now knows that it's 2017, August 1st, at 2.13 p.m. and the second timer is clicking upward. This is required for your schedule of events, along with the clock module on the back of your Pixie. For UI and security, it's much more simpler commands. So in this case here, key clicks sound active. These are the key clicks that appear on the Pixie whenever you press the button. There's also a security lockout on power off. So you can go ahead and set up information based on that and set up the key sequence accordingly. So you can add in different codes needed in order to go ahead and change the Pixie. And you can set up an inactivity shutdown timer. This does not require the clock module to do. This conforms to the last button that was pressed on the Pixie. So for example, let's say someone turned the volume down. After one hour of the button being pressed, the Pixie will begin beeping at you before it finally shuts the system down entirely. And updates finally are just to update the firmware on the wand in order to go ahead and put those on the Pixie or on the wand itself. In this case, there hasn't been an update in a little while, so these are the current versions, 205, and 0056 for the Pixie. Once everything is set, click Send to Wand, then information will be sent to the Wand's memory bank in order to write to the Pixie. One thing to note that's important, the Wand has two separate memory banks, one for reading and one for writing. If you click Send to Wand and then immediately click Retrieve from Wand, the data will be different. Let's go ahead and click Retrieve from Wand right now. Since we've already hit Send to Wand, let's hit Retrieve and see what that data is. This data here is entirely different. On this wand, the last red data included a hex code, which we did not enter just a moment ago with a different baud rate, and a relay control code for one of our relays for a screen down command. If we wanted to write this information to the Pixie, we would click Send to Wand again, and it would overwrite that previous sent code that we originally wrote. Let's do that now. And now that just overwrote the data that we just wrote to the Pixie. And again, we will want to go ahead and save this configuration. File, Save As, and again, give it some name. Just to say Hitachi Red from Wand. And then click Save. And that data will be saved to your system. Once you're finished, close out the config utility, close out the wand, and safely eject the wand from your computer. Once it's ejected, go ahead and unplug the wand, and we can write this information to the Pixie.